The Amstrad PCW series is a range of personal computers produced by British company Amstrad from 1985 to 1998. It's sold under a license in Europe as the Joyce by German electronics company Schneider. PCW is short for Personal Computer Word Processor. I got this Amstrad PCW8256 in a recent trade from another uh, retro computer collector in my area. So this video is going to be showing off the computer, the ports, the disk drive, what I got with it in my trade, and what my future plans are for the machine. Example, I'm going to be replacing the, the floppy drive with a GoTech drive. I'm going to be upgrading the RAM from 256 KB to 512 KB, you know, stuff like that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what might be a multiple part series video on my Amstrad PCW8256 computer. For those that aren't familiar with the Amstrad PCW8256 computer, it's got a Z80 processor running at 4 megahertz, and as mentioned earlier, it's got 256 KB of memory. It can be upgraded to 512 KB of memory. It's really easy to do. From what I've read on the inside, the sockets are already there. And I just got to add eight chips, which I've got those. So in the future, I will be doing that. What else? Oh, so it's the 8256 is the model. The PCW8512 is basically the same computer, but with 512 KB memory already in it and two disk drives. So there, you know, this is the disk drive here. And then with the 512 model, it would be another disk drive here. And speaking of disk drives, this is the, uh, it's a three inch disk drive, not three and a half, but three inch. And I'll show you what those disks look like in a moment. Here is the keyboard. It's very clicky. It's a nice looking keyboard. I'm not sure if it's mechanical, but it feels like it. Just plugs in right here on the side of the machine. And what's really cool is this is self-contained. The monitor, the disk drive, everything is in the monitor. Of course, the keyboard's separate. And then uh, the printer right here. And I'll show you how that hooks up. I also got both manuals with the machine, which is pretty cool. And next, I'll turn the machine around and show you the ports on the back. Here is the back of the machine, and on here you can see we've got a power port, printer port, expansion port. This uh, power port right here, this is for the printer, and uh, let me grab that cable here, oh, the printer cable right here, there it is, I'll just plug in there, and then of course yeah, the printer, here's a printer cable that would plug in right there. We got the power cord right here. So that's also self-contained in the machine is the power supply. Here is the sticker on the back. These machines were released in September of 1985, but this particular machine was manufactured in June of 1986. So this is a little bit later. Um, you know, it's not like a first release or whatever, but uh, that's cool. So yeah, here's the sticker on the back, show you kind of what it says. Got the UL rating, the serial number. And then down here on the bottom, let's move this, uh, let's move this power cord out of the way. Unplug that here, or unwind it, I should say. We've got some vertical hold and horizontal hold adjustments um, you can get the vertical hold but for horizontal hold you'd have to use a small screwdriver I'm assuming but when I open up the machine I'll know a little better so yeah there is the back of the machine next I will show you the printer here is the Amstrad PCW8256 printer this came with the machine not only when I got it in my trade, but when you bought the machine new, it came with a printer because basically this was sold as a word processor. That's pretty much what it was used for, word processing and spreadsheets. But there are some amazing games for this computer and that's part of why I wanted one. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video. But here's the printer. 
It's in really nice shape. It's a dot matrix printer. Got the little cover here that flips up. And you can just put in single sheets of paper. Or I've uh, also got the, uh, the tractor feed attachment for it as well. So you could have your box of tractor feed paper and just, you know, continuous feed. I've got the uh, these little deals here. These uh, hook up here on the top. Like so, like that. And the other one goes on right here. And that's, you know, just to hold your paper, you know, to keep it going in. It's got the, uh, this lifts up here. It's got an original ribbon that's probably dried out. I haven't tested it yet. But what's really cool in this lot that I got here, it also came with a brand new ribbon, factory sealed. You know, so if the ribbon in here is not good anymore, this one should definitely be good. But these could also be re-inked, so I'm not too concerned about it, but it was nice to actually get, you know, I got the tractor feed attachment, you know, a new ribbon, and the thing is in super nice shape. It's really clean, and maybe I'll print out some banners or something. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Next up, I'm going to talk about the future plans for this machine and maybe a part two video. Something else to note really quick is, as mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video, the Amstrad computers were big in Europe, not really big in the US, but Amstrad had representation in the United States and that's where this machine came from. And looking in the manual, right here you can see Amstrad International USA in Northbrook, Illinois. So this machine has been in the US its entire life, which is pretty cool. And then real quick, I'll show you on the quick startup guide here. Here's just the opening showing you setting up the machine. You know, what it would have come with. Connecting everything, etc. The only thing that I did not get that this would have originally come with were the original floppies. But that's okay because I've got some copies and I'm going to be doing a GoTech floppy drive uh, upgrade to this machine, which I will talk about next. A common failure point with these Amstrad machines is with the disk drive. And the fail that happens is the belt for the drive mechanism breaks, wears out, gets gummy, sticky, you know, something like that, and, and then the drive won't work. So what I planned on originally doing was pulling this drive out, putting a new belt on it, and being good to go. Well, a year, year and a half ago, what got me interested in these machines was watching Retro Recipes Parafractic. He did a video, and I'll put a link in the description where you can actually play games on this machine and that's what got me really interested. I didn't want it for word processing, I wanted it for for game playing. In his video he talked about doing a GoTech solution which is what I'm going to be doing with this machine. First let me show you what a three inch disc looks like though. Here is a three inch floppy disc. You know it's double sided, they call them flippy. So this would be uh, side A, you can see the A Get in the light right there, the A at the top, right there. And then on the other side, B. And you just pop the disc in the drive like so. And boom, Bob's your uncle. But as mentioned, the belt is broken on my drive, so Bob is not my uncle right now. But three inch disc, we're all used to the three and a half inch disc, which became the standard. Here's a three and a half inch disc. So I'll show you kind of a side by side. There is a three and a half on the left, three inch on the right, and you can see the, the difference, you know, the size difference with them, which is pretty interesting. You know, um, I guess Amstrad was the only computers that I could find that used these three inch discs, but I have a few of them, which is really cool. This is a blank Maxell, and I've actually got the labels for it too, where you know it would go on here, folds over, so the spine, and then you know the A B side. Pretty cool. So yeah, I'm going to in a part two video, I've decided I'm going to pull this drive out. I will replace the belt just to get that done, but I'm also going to be doing a GoTech 
and GoTech is, here's a GoTech right here. This will not fit in there the way it is because this is, you know, a three half inch, you know, drive bay deal. But what I'm going to do is take this apart, three screws, take this apart. I'm going to pull the mechanism out. I'm going to use a 3D printed bracket, which I've already done. And my buddy Joel helped me out because he had the black uh, filament, which I was out of. Got that right here. So this is going to go in. The drive will be mounted here. Whoops. Yeah. Drive will be mounted here. And it will go in like this. You know, the USB, the buttons. Oh, I'm going to put in an OLED screen. So you can see how this is, you know, how that's kind of laid out. You know, like that. Except the screen, instead of being vertical, it's going to be horizontal. And that will be put in there. I'm also going to need a special ribbon cable, which I've already got that right here. And a power cable, got that right here. So I've got everything I need. I've got my GoTech, my ribbon cable, power cable, 3D printed bracket. I'm gonna get it all put together and installed in that spot right here. So stay tuned for part two, which should be coming up soon. I know it's been a while since I've done some videos, but I'm gonna be much better about that. So part two of my Amstrad PCW8256 video will be putting in the GoTech drive in this machine and getting it loaded up and also replacing the belt on this drive to show people how that's done. So thank you for watching my video and bearing with me stumbling through this. Again, I'm not a professional YouTuber, but I just want to show off some stuff that I've got that interests me and hopefully what I show you will help you out and all will be well. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Please subscribe, ring the bell for future notifications, and again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.